you dance a little bit to some of our jazz. <laughs> Alrighty, and we are back. Thank you very much for, I hope you danced a little, hope you didn't pull anything. Um, but we are very excited to be here this evening. And uh, first we have to take care of our sponsor. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. George and uh, tell, us, tell us something nice. <laughs> something nice. Thank you, sir. So uh, the Counterpart Show is brought to you by Wellness Resources, a family owned and operated nutritional supplement company providing the highest quality clinically formulated supplements since 1985. Find out why Wellness Resources supplements are the top choice of conscious individuals around the world. Go to myvitaminresource.com, enter the promo code COUNTERPARTS, and you will receive free shipping on any size order. Cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit about our guest today. We're so excited. We have Terrell Rothery here. So Terrell is a Canadian actress of stage, television, and film. She is best known for portraying Janet Frazier in the TV series Stargate SG-1, which she co-starred she co as Grace Sherman in Hallmark Channel's original series Cedar Grove, as well as had major roles in other shows such as Virgin River, Arrow and Nancy Drew. Terrell has received four Lero Award nominations, including Best Supporting Performance by a Female in a Dramatic Series for her past reoccurring role in Global's The Guard. Aside from her acting career, Terrell is an intuitive coach, helping clients to tap into the deepest parts of themselves to discover what may be holding them back from being the best version of themselves that they can be. We are absolutely excited to have her. So without further ado, please welcome Terrell Rothery. Yay! <laughs> and the band start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, wasn't that nice? I love the music, and oh my gosh, George, your voice isn't he amazing? Yeah. Everything is exactly. so distinct. That's, that's why he does that role. <laughs> you should be on stage. You should be doing Shakespeare. Oh, there you oh go. wow! I, I yeah. know George. You know, I mean, I'm the little Puerto Rican, and I'm the actor, and yet. <laughs> Here he is looking like this. I've, I've never acted in my life, but yet, you know, I should be doing Shakespeare. Imagine me doing like Hamlet or something like that. It's, Just because I know you and we grew up together. George and I are cousins, so we grew up together. Oh, my gosh. So, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So it would be kind of hilarious for me to see, but I think you can definitely pull it off. Yeah. Uh, well, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is such a joy. And we have the way we, we do it. George is very, like, organized, you know, you can tell. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's got his questions. He's got everything. So he and then I like to kind of free flow and kind of hear the question, you know, hear the response and then maybe something will trigger. So we kind of have that kind of a going for us. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to George for our first question for you. And then we're just going to get rock and roll in here. Sounds good. Absolutely. So. First of all, again, you know, we talked a little bit about it, but, the, you know, what we do on this show is we we try to um, we talk to artists and talk about their journey. And we we want to um, show other artists and viewers who are watching this show, um, you know, this is how you can overcome obstacles and kind of give them a blueprint of what people who have been successful in that industry, whatever industry, you know, uh, what they did and what their mindset was. So that's kind of the premise of what we do here. But I want to know uh, from you, obviously, you've been very successful in acting. Um, when you started out, when you were young, was acting always your passion? Did you do anything else? Or was it just, you know, straight ahead? Uh, it's all I ever wanted to do was really? to perform. Um, it's so funny. And I say this all the time when I'm, I'm chatting with people or they ask me questions from the time I was four, when people would say to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I didn't know the term actor, thespian, you know, theater, none of that. It was just <laughs> going to be a movie star. It's all oh, I ever wanted to right, be right, was right. a movie star. <laughs> and there was nothing that was in my, my way. Like even throughout school there was there was I, I can't even begin to describe how it was just like this and people would say you know your aunts uncles whatever are you sure you know what about do you have something to fall back on and and I would always say no why this, this is what I'm going to do right. like, there was just never a question 
Um, so yes, that's all I've ever wanted to do, and which is really interesting because for those who have read different things about me, I had I was debilitatingly shy. Like, really? oh my gosh, incredibly shy. It was insane, really. Um, and that's how this all started. My grandmother decided to put me into, I was a great performer at home. I was amazing. I had to put on shows all the time, but people, I, so anyway, my grandmother um, decided to put me into dance because my cousin was going to go in and she said, why don't you do this? She was thinking this would maybe, you know, bring me out of my shell. And all these years later, she's cursing herself because she's, you know, been trying to stuff me back in mm. to that <laughs> shell. But um yeah, so I went into dance and it was interesting, guys, because I would be in the wings, you know, on stage before a competition or performance and nervous, really, really nervous. And then as soon as I would hit the stage, the lights, the music, and I knew what I was going to do, that was it. It was like I became this different person wow. and applause when the applause would happen or whatever. And then as soon as I get back to the wings, I'd be shy again. So it was like wow. my way of finding my voice. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and That's then as I got older through with the performing, I also discovered, isn't it fun if I was at a party, if I could just be funny, I'll just be funny and I'll make them laugh. And then that would also put me at ease. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how that all came to be. Just crazy shy. Wow. wow, that's amazing. And you know, it's, it's one of the, the themes that we have um, is that directional viewpoint, you know, that kind of like, whatever anyone else is saying, what do you have to fall back on? You know, are you sure you want to, you're going to put all your eggs in one basket, you know, all the cliches and all the comments that people make. But yet there's always this, it's, I, I believe it's a spiritual thing. I believe it's a purpose thing. It's been there, you know, who knows how long. But it's this journey that is just like, you know what, just throw whatever you want at me. I'm still going in this direction, you know. And oh, for so many people, more. it's so difficult, yeah. you know. Um, did you have a supportive family as well? I see your grandmother was definitely uh, pushing oh, you yeah, in that huge. direction. I was raised by my grandparents, so they she was oh, like cool. my me mom. Too, so actually. she all, you too? Mm -hmm. Yes. John, yes. look at us. Yes. <laughs> Both actors. Both. Yes. Isn't that amazing? I hear so many stories yes. of this yeah. sort of thing happening it's it's yeah. uh it's interesting oh my gosh i would love to get into the psyche of all of that stuff how I that happens <laughs> right it's, it's so George is like oh please you two don't don't, don't. <laughs> um, not now <laughs> <laughs> that's another show you yeah. do. Right. <laughs> um but yeah and she was extremely supportive and she always has well both my grandparents would always say just you have to follow your dreams and you just have to be wow. happy and do your it was always do your best do your best do your best yeah. um and that's so that's what i i grew up with and you know being allowed to be myself and and do what i wanted to do sometimes they would shake their heads but you know yeah it's uh it paid yeah. off yeah. I will I will state also my mother was very much involved in my life. She remarried and then had my brother and my sisters, uh, which I'm very close to. Um, so she was in my life and supportive, but my grandparents were really the ones that that nurtured me and really took care of me, especially in a rough environment where I grew up. I grew up in the South Bronx during the 70s and the 80s where things were a little cuckoo. Um, mm -hmm. But they were they gave me that support. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a whole different like when you meet people that were raised by their grandpa, I always like. Oh, we're part of a we're part of a of a different thing that we're kindred really, spirits. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 It doesn't really get spoken to. Again, we're not going to go there, YouTube, <laughs> but it does have to be. Uh, it has to be addressed at some point. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, one of the things that you said that I, that I identify with very much was that I was also painfully shy. I was the kid in in kindergarten when they were doing the head shoulders knees and toes i was in the back just sitting there and you know not wanting to do every anything you know and this guy knows because he's known me all my life and he knew how painfully shy i was so just to do this and we you know eventually we were musicians we played we 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 toured we did albums and all those things but it's funny that you say when you got in front of the camera when you performed that would that everything changed and the same thing for me when i got on stage it yeah. was like all of a sudden there it was a completely different world for me 
Yeah. And and I just, you know, I tapped into that, like John says, that spiritual thing. I tapped into that thing and I was all of a sudden able to communicate to the audience. And that was my way. But then as soon as I left that stage, I went back into my shell. So it's just pretty funny yeah. how that, that works. What was yeah. your what's your instrument? Is it a guitar? I saw the Well, I I'm the drummer and he's the guitar player. Oh, wow. So you had your kit to hide behind, too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Right? So, you know, sub <laughs> on a subconscious level, there was still kind of that yes. fourth wall yes. protecting you. Exactly. But did you uh, do vocals as well, even in, in uh, backup or lead? Uh, it's, it, it, oh, really? so, in, so, yeah, a little bit. In, some, in, in different bands that I was in, I did do some backup vocals as well. Um, yeah. But even that, was it was tough for me. It was very yeah. tough. I mean, even to, again, people who talk to me now, they say, really? You were shy? And I'm like, I'm still shy. I'm still, I'm yeah. never going to be the guy that talks the most in the room. It's just, it's just not me. Yeah. Isn't <laughs> it turned it out something? to be that your Puerto Rican turned out to be a, <laughs> <laughs> I, I turned out to be the one that won't he, shut yeah, up. Yeah, he's the talker. Yes. yes. <laughs> I actually uh, was, I remember with Georgia, not to go into our, because we want to, obviously we want to uh, cover Oh, we have stuff to cover, but I remember George uh, didn't have a drum set and he wanted to play drums and I had a guitar and I was like, come on, we got to get your mother to get you a drum set, you know, for your birthday, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. And that's how it all started, you know? And again, we got to play and uh, record albums and, and had a really great time with that. Um, so I wanted to, to talk to you a little bit about that challenge when, like, when, when did you decide, because when you're dancing and, and you're kind of doing those, it's sort of like other people are in charge of getting you to the theater and bringing you to rehearsals. But there's that moment where suddenly you're like, oh, now it's just up to me. I have to get myself to auditions and to you know meetings with uh, agents and stuff like that. Do you remember that transition? I think the, the first thing that comes to mind is I remember it was always on stage and and as I got older, I would drive in with other, you know, friends who had were older and were able to. They had the driver's mm. license, that kind of thing, and that was fine. And going to dance class, and you get you find your own people, right? So then you start to get comfortable there, and absolutely, it starts to go away as you get older. A little bit of that shyness goes away, but I mean, uh, George, I think you can attest to this. I I still call myself, as I'm sure you do, the extroverted introvert. Yes, yes. Right? It's absolutely. like you're able to do you're able to do both. Where right. you were not is a little one, but as we mature, you can you can juggle both. Um, so that was always on stage, and there was always that magic of the audience. I think when a lot of the transition happened was when I discovered what it was like for the camera. And again, it was in a dance situation oh, okay. and it was a, a, we were recording. So right now we're, at, we're in studios, so television shows dancing. And I remember that camera lens and thinking, isn't this even more magical? Mm. Because instead of me, have, there was almost, it was like a kind of a protection in a way because mm. instead of me having to go out, right? And you mess up, it's live, right? Right. You you sort yeah. of you have to go through it. But the beauty of this camera lens was, oh, they I can bring them into me. Right. They right. can come into me, and oh, that didn't work. Oh, we get another take. Oh, right. so that there that really that's what comes to mind. I think I was about sixteen when that happened, and that was mm. like a big sort of turning point turning point for me um loving the camera and and just wanting to do nothing but that and then of course juggling the two but yeah so that it would have been around 16 yeah 16. there's a there's a magic in film you know that yeah. that um yeah like I'll, I'll have to sometimes watch a film i'm a filmmaker myself and mm -hmm. i'll have to watch a film like a two or three times because the first time i'm trying to get the story but I, it, it, I get pulled off about like, oh, how did they do that shot? Oh, very interesting place to put the camera. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, and oh, that's a, or, or even like, that's a strange cut. Why did they do that? Yeah. And then I have to go back and watch it again and then watch it again. I, I watched uh, The Irishman um, a bunch of times. I don't know if you've seen it yet. I have not seen it yet. Yeah, it's long. It's three hours. You got to give yeah. yourself a week. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's wonderful performances. And I had to, I think I've, seen it like 10 times just for that same reason i'm like let me just pay attention to the story john can you just <laughs> get the brain off for a second and just be a consumer 
<laughs> but don't you find, see, for, and I totally, I'm in complete agreement and I'm just like you in that way because we do. We think, well, where the hell was continuity on that one? Right. That, that's, mm-hmm. what, why did they, why would they cut there? Well, their access, access looks off on, the, you know, but yeah. to me, if the story is riveting right. yes. and the story is being told right. in such a way that that, for me, John, yeah. that goes away automatically because right. I'm so caught up. I've got goosebumps when I think That's about right. it. I'm so caught yeah. up in story. Yeah. I don't have time to think where they, you know, and then to the point where if there is a minuscule little thing, it's like I'm so caught up in story and it's like a, like yeah. they sort of, it's like yeah. a whiplash pulling back. And it's like, where did that come, come from? And there, before I can even go there again, yeah. I'm back in because I want to hear where we're going. Right. Yeah. And that's like, why yeah, I'm with up, you on that. Yeah. And that's why I brought up the Irishman because when I watched it, I was so in, engrossed in the, in the story. And did it hold were, you? For it like the held me three? for three hours. I watched wow. it in one sitting the first time, I, wow. which, which, you know, I, I, I saw it thinking to myself, well, three hours, I'm not going to be able to sit here for three hours. Yeah. I sat through the whole thing and it was like, it, it was a breeze. It was just beautifully shot, beautifully acted. These are, you know, these are, these, these are veteran guys have been, so the, the characters weren't familiar, you know, because you, you see like Goodfellas and then you see Casino and you're like, OK, well, like, I know those kind of guys in that mm-hmm. transition. But these were really different characters. So, yeah, I, I totally I totally get that. And it's but it's still it's such a wonderful um, experience to be able to at, at least look at a piece of work and know and appreciate what's behind the camera and behind the scenes yeah. and how much work goes into putting just sometimes just one character on on camera. <laughs> You know, yeah. and all that that goes on through it. So it, it is a something that I love to be part of. George, you have a uh, no, yeah, I was uh, <laughs> I like just I just kind of adding to that actually. But you know, and it's true. I'm I find myself as I got older, really more into stories now and and movies with great stories versus when I was younger. But I find that nowadays, especially with the the blockbusters and all that, you're not you're there's there's something lost now. You're not seeing a lot right. of a lot of that like you used to. So yeah. I find myself kind of going back to a lot of older movies or maybe the, the independent films that have some of these great stories right. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I I think a little bit at, or again, I'm as just a lay person. I'm, I don't know much about film at all, but just watching him, I find myself just gravitating more to either independent or older stuff these days because yeah. those stories hold me. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of um, series in the last i would say 10 years maybe five years that mm-hmm. have really done really well i think mm-hmm. they they realize you know we can do a lot now right you know we don't mm-hmm. have to it, it's not it's not coming you know in the 80s it was like oh you're on tv yeah, or, yeah. or in yeah. the 70s yeah, yeah. or something you know and now it's like no now if you're on netflix if you're on, on one of these networks it's a big deal especially right. on these series and i wanted to ask you a little bit about that because I, I know um with um um what the, what's uh, I can't I can't remember the name now. I should this is why I should write things down. Uh-huh. Uh, Virgin River. <laughs> Virgin, I was Virgin just River. about to say how many words. I'm Sounds the organized right. one. You see, Sounds I'm the right. organized. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with Virgin River, um, the reason I got into that show was because I was a huge fan of Northern Exposure, um, which kind of a lot of quirky characters, a lot of drama, but a lot of like little fun, you know, and Virgin. Um, River had that, that same, uh, you know, what was that experience like? And we can, obviously, there's a lot of other things in between there um, that we can jump around with. But that experience of being on a set that was really well written and was really well thought out. And, you know, I mean, it's got to be such a joy to go to work and know that what you're going to say is going to mean something. And it's not just somebody just being like, I think this would be funny. <laughs> you know, and just just for the the two sec second giggle and something that really is going to be a, a you know a joy to watch for years to come. Yeah, we're still on that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. season four is going to be airing July twentieth, mm-hmm. and then we will start shooting uh, season five mid July. So we that's coming wow. out, um, and it's fabulous. I love it. It's like yeah. you say. You know, I just love I love the characters. There's so many, you know, different characters on it. And working with all of these people has just been, you know, a gift. I tend to, my character works a lot with Annette O'Toole and Tim mm-hmm. Matheson. I mean, with, Spring, with a lot of the town people as well, but they're just great. I mean, it's just such a treat to 
bring these characters to life and finding that fine line where you kind of want to go bigger. And with yeah. Muriel, my character Muriel, yeah. I have, I'm able to, which is great because yeah. she is this, you know, She's <laughs> I like to call her misunderstood. She's yeah. <laughs> um, she's looking for love. She just wants to be happy and noticed all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I get to play a lot with her, and then so does Hope. I mean, Annette right. O'Toole's character. She gets to play around. So there's lots of fun yeah. stuff, and and lots of it's just a treat. And I literally cannot be. I can't wait to go back. Like we're all That's pretty great. excited. I can't wait to see the scripts. I can't wait till they yeah. come out. Yeah. And you, you have a busy July, too, because you got uh, also Cedar Cove is uh, coming out, I believe, July 18th. See, no, Cedar Cove. We finished that a very long time ago. Oh, okay. Is yeah, it we airing did... uh, on, on the 8th? I think it's still airing in, in different places. We only shot oh, okay. three seasons of that. And that was even before. This is how long ago it is. Um, <laughs> poor John's going, oh, please, Terrell, don't rub it in. Um, no, 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 no. And George is going, told no. you so, told you so. Exactly. You to be organized like me. Well, I saw right here, it's, it's July 18th, but I, I think I'm just missing the, the year. <laughs> I think you're missing the year. Yeah. So When Calls the Heart is a is a Hallmark series, right. a period right. piece that is going into their... Oh my gosh, now it's my turn to get called on it. I think they're in season 10, 11. Wow. I forget. It's wow. it's their way up there. So we were the first ones out of the gate. And then they came in as well and they kept going and, and we ended after three. So that's oh, that's okay. where that was. But that was, again, one of those gift roles, speaking of the writing, yeah. where reading the part of Grace Sherman just was such a treat. It's like, it's you just sort of it's so easy to walk into the skin of that character that I just oh my gosh I had again the best time ever another one of my favorite characters I loved it really? and working with you know Andy and and such an amazing cast Andy McDowell and yeah so it was great so cool we're hoping we keep saying wouldn't it be nice if they had a little reunion or a Christmas oh, yes, movie or yes, something because yes. there's still places those characters can go yeah um, which is, you know, I think deep down, all of us would love that to happen. So cool. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of obstacles, can you tell the story of your audition for snakes on the plane? George, I used to like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that back now. Come on. That is a it's beautiful story. So, you know story. what? It is it's so a freaking hysterical but yes. it's one that has to be done yes. live to really get the full effect but i will do my best so it's snakes <laughs> on a plane <laughs> flight attendant so you know i'm wearing a skirt the navy blue like you know we try to you know dress accordingly sort of um blue high heels like everything and i'm it's it's choppy because this flight attendant so it's not like a through line of storytelling it's it's choppy in that she's dealing with these you know snakes and so you're reacting to stuff that you've got to formulate in your mind and and we don't even since the pandemic we don't even go in for live auditions anymore it's all you know, know. self tape so this is going obviously way back when we're there and there's a tripod and all this equipment and the casting director and everything is around you and you know I'm I'm on a carpet at one point and I'm so into the character and I've got to like jump across to try and save this baby because this snake is going to get the baby. And I, I'm doing the scenes and then I'm acting. Everything is great. And I go from like, I'm trying to get like a full run. And then from the carpet, I hit the hardwood floor and I go, I'm up in the air <laughs> in my skirt. I start to slide. I'm not embellishing slide across the floor. My legs spread, the skirt's now hiked up. The leg, one of the legs of the tripod is right in my crotch, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> Equipment is starting to fall. Camera operator's trying to hold on to the camera, grabbing some of the other stuff that's all. And he's like this, and there's dead silence. And then I hear the casting director, oh, oh, are you okay? And it's like, you know, you're... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. And you're trying to pull down your yeah. skirt and, you know, pull back any smidgen of class and decorum you can possibly find. Right. And it's like, well, I guess I did save that baby. But, wow, what a way to yeah. go about it. How's the equipment? 
I mean, it was insane. Uh, that, and but <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, um, let's just say I did not get the part. Oh no! But you kind of no. hope that it would have. Yeah. They would have kept it and said, "You got to see this." Just right. for a blooper, and right. you kind of wish that you know the the producers were like, "Oh, that yeah. poor woman." All right, let's yeah, we'll we'll cast her. But yeah, yeah. But you know, it's it's great to hear stories like that, just because it shows, you know, it shows obviously overcoming an obstacle because you leave there and you're just like, "Oh my lord!" I, you know, I've done, I've had audition. Anyways, I can't even. I don't even like to think about some of the auditions and that I did that I screwed up so badly. <laughs> Then I left there like sweating, getting on the elevator back down. I can't even press the button because my finger is shaking. It's and it's that it's that thing where you wish a hole would just suddenly open up, <laughs> just, right? Just, yeah, you just fall into it and just be gone, and it's over because, and then you can't get it out of your mind because now you're walking, <laughs> you you're having home. coffee, you're eating, you're on the subway, I'm, and you're I'm still reciting wife, the I'm lines, like, yeah. and it's still going, it's still going. Why did I do this? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? And I'm trying to sleep. I can't. It, it is the worst. If you can overcome something like that, I think you can pretty much overcome anything. Exactly. You know? I, I think that, that is so true. That is one oh of the things that we, uh, we, uh, we talk about yes. um, here on the show a lot. I, I get, um, I learned, but um, auditioning is one of those things. And I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about because auditioning is, is such a little, it's such a weird thing, right? Because sometimes it really has no bearing on, anything it's just they want to see you they want to meet you now things are a little bit different with the self tapes mm -hmm. but you know i i heard this uh on this uh, documentary that i saw where the actor was was talking about you know auditioning you can go in there and the, the casting director you'll remind the casting director or the director of his brother which he likes or you remind him of his brother which he hates right. you know so <laughs> you walk in and whatever those, you know, whatever it is, is that's what the, the reaction is going to be. And it doesn't matter how well you know your lines. It doesn't matter any of that. How do you approach? I mean, probably you don't audition as much now, um, but how do you did you approach during those early years of auditioning and then having that stuff when you mess one up and <laughs> <laughs> the repeating over and over in your head? How did you... <laughs> uh, how I don't, you know. <laughs> It's like you say, I remember, this is years ago, walking into a room and, and I haven't even said boo yet. And I see the director and, you know, he, he has this look on like, and as soon as he made eye contact, I got this. Oh, wow. And right away I'm going, okay, <laughs> A, I'm not what he's looking for. B, I obviously remind him of his ex-wife that is now <laughs> suing him for every cent right. he has. <laughs> right? And this is all going in a flash, as you know, John. It, it, it happens. Quick. It just goes through and you just go, I got to do what I got to do. I mean, there's times where you kind of want to go, should I just leave? Yeah. You, I just, yeah. you know, you do want to, right. but I, I just, you go through it. Yeah, you got to keep going. You just keep yeah. going and you walk out and yeah, you start those yeah. ones I find easier because it's like, okay, that one's out of my hand because you know, before you even opened your mouth, you were right. out. And right. so that sort of relieves you of as long, you know what I mean? That it's, it was something else and it wasn't yeah. me. It wasn't what I did, but it's still, right. I mean, that's your ego, right? It's our right. ego and you can't change yeah. that. All we can do is the best we can do. Right. And hope you know you can change their minds. That's all yeah. we can do. And it's a hard one. It's a hard one for the young ones. Like when mm -hmm. younger actors are asking me, "How do you do it?" I said, "Just you got to really have a thick skin." And it's hard. Man, you know, it doesn't matter how many years later, it still it still gets you because yeah. it's still your person. Yeah. But all you can do is trust and know that whatever you've done is your best, and just keep keep doing it. Yeah. Because out of a hundred auditions, you might might get one or at mm. least a callback of one out of at least a hundred at least yeah it's all yeah. numbers um my acting coach used to always tell me your job is not to get the role your job is to get auditions correct just get auditions that's yeah. it um i you know i'm a short puerto rican from the bronx right so when i i would walk into a room and they'd be like wall to wall short puerto ricans in there <laughs> <laughs> they all they all look like me and i can't tell you how your heart sinks when you walk into a room and like you kind of see your type now they didn't all look like me but you see your type mm -hmm. and you're just like oh god you know it's like 
why? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> well, it's, it's everywhere, like, right? It's like, it you is, know, it's everywhere, yeah. And, you know, I'm constantly changing my hair for whatever the role is. Yeah. Um, but walking into a room with, you know, Caucasian females in this age bracket, all of them blonde, you know, you might get the odd sprinkling, but it's like you say, I am so grateful to be in this room and to be included and to right. audition. And that's, that's how you have good. to look at it. Exactly. Sadly, uh, nowadays it's, you don't even get that opportunity because as you know, uh, John, and I'm sure even in other lines of work with, with you, George, the same thing is that you, you can walk in and they might have a preconceived idea, especially if mm -hmm. it's the writer of what they want and what they're looking for physically for that right. role. But you do your audition because they have to honor your time in that room. Mm -hmm. You right. do that audition and it's happened to me where they've gone, you know what? We were actually wanting a man for this role and I got the role. Wow. Look at that. So it's little things like that. Things, yeah. Nowadays, and this is what we have to tell the younger ones, and it's also hard for us older ones to get used to that again. Now they're sitting in Video Village because they're on a quick lunch break, you know, so they're still at Video Village. They're eating and they've got, you know, on their iPad, you know, auditions coming in for the next episode or whatever. And now instead of seeing what they're doing, they look and they'll hear, Hi, I'm Terrell, you know, I'm five foot, and it's like, no, wrong look. And then it's swipe, 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 wow. swipe. So you can be auditioning for 12 pages. And I'm not just saying this because I'm surmising it. I also have very dear friends in, that are behind the scenes that are doing that very thing that are my friends. And I say, tell me the truth. It's what happens, right? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then you have to think, well, what do I have to slate now standing on my head? Like what, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you also have to just trust that one of those times they're going to go, yeah, that's the look. I'll put that aside. Let's watch that one. Yeah. 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 And I think there's also a little bit of a, I mean, the, the, the video auditioning now sending in video tapes and stuff like that, you know, kind of changed it a little bit in, in respect where, where people they, they have more options to look at it you know faster i mean the swiping thing is even though it's it is faster mm -hmm. you know even though it's not pleasant to see yourself feeling like a some tinder chick you know and mm -hmm. like zoom 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 swipe 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 but at least there's there's a an op, you know a chance and you have a, what, do you, what do you have two seconds maybe to just kind of capture somebody, you know, with whatever yeah. it is, the more times you put yourself in that swipe, the better chance you get. Absolutely. You know? and that's, that's the and there, other, Yeah. The and like you just said, it also opens the door for more people be, because before right. there'd be a certain amount of people who would be, you know, sitting in that waiting room to go in an audition. Now it's opening it up to people in all sorts of different right. places, you know, countries, even all, right. you know, sending in their, their tape. So, yeah. That's a plus. Another plus, you know, are you in L.A. now? No, I'm actually in Nashville. Oh, I'm originally Nashville. from New York. And yeah, so I'm living in Nashville. Nashville. That's fabulous. Yeah. But now it's like, OK, there you go. When you're in the city running around trying to find a parking spot, Nashville, it's so humid. <laughs> You know, the humidity yeah, in right the now summer is that, you know, for especially for a woman, your makeup is melting. The yeah. hair, you can spend all this time curling in and it's flat. And yeah, you're yeah. rushing in going, oh, my God. And you don't even have time and beads of sweat. And then you do the audition. Now, oh, I don't have to hustle. I don't have to go in an hour in yeah. advance trying to find parking. I don't have to run and get caught in a thunderstorm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like anything in life. There's always going to be the pros. There's always going to be the cons. Right. And it's dependent upon how we want to look at things. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times in New York, running from one audition to another, you, I walk in looking like I've been smoking crack for a week. Yeah. <laughs> Just, right? You know, it's right. true. I'm sweating yeah. and I'm throwing water on my pits and, <laughs> Jesus. and you're like, I'm sorry. I just came from uptown and now, uh, and yeah. I had to run here, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there is a joy of that also because I did enjoy some of that running around as well. well. It's part of the thing is the it's, adrenaline. It's, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, it's part of the journey, you know, um, George, you, uh, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm, that's okay. I want to, I want it to kind of, <laughs> it's okay. You that's, I'm so used to you, my friend. <laughs> This is how many years of this, really? Yeah. You know, just cutting me <laughs> off. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I w I want to ask you about because the, I heard an interview with you where you talked about that 
uh, growing up, you were a person that asked a lot of questions, life questions oh. that you, you really got into philosophy and, and just, you know, the existential questions. And I, and I'm assuming that's what led you to more of your coaching and what you're doing now and helping people and that type of thing, because I'm the same exact way. John is that way as well. We've always been, we've always felt a bit different in the fact that we've never looked at life like so many other people do. Like I grew up a Catholic, for example, you know, this is fine. You know, like that's that old joke that George Carlin says, I grew up Catholic until they reached the age of reason. But, <laughs> yes. but, oh, but you know, and I, I mean, Catholicism is great. But what I'm saying is that I, I asked so many questions as I got older that I said, you know what, there's got to be more to life. There's got to be more. There's got to be another spiritual part right. of this that I, I need to know. And I know you have gotten into that. Tell us a little bit about that journey for you. Oh, it's been, it's huge. I can totally agree with both of you. I always questioned things. I couldn't, I just simply couldn't take things at, at face value. Um, I grew up Catholic. I uh, went to a private Catholic school. I cannot tell you, gentlemen, how many times I got sent home from religion class because I would question everything. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I, I never, what was it, Sister it's, oh, I shouldn't even say it. It's, it's nasty. I can't remember her name, but we called her Sister Tank. Um, <laughs> that's terrible. Isn't that horrible? That is so politically incorrect. And yet here we are laughing. So. And yeah. we are laughing. <laughs> Sister Tank, oh man, she could, she would punch you. You know, she gave oh, so many wow. of my friends. A, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I'd be in, you know, religion class and, and I remember her going on about, uh, only Catholics, and again, I for, forgive anybody who, whatever your faith mm -hmm. is, I'm just mm -hmm. simply relaying a story from when right. I was 13, but how only Catholics would go to heaven. The Protestants don't get to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. wow, and everybody would sit and listen, and I'd be in my little skirt, my little tie, right? I'd be like, oh, oh, you know, <laughs> hand going, and they would, and she'd go begrudgingly, yes, Carol, how can you say that? How can you say that? Do you not realize I have so many friends that are also Protestant or whatever they are? And they're really good people, sister. They're really good people. So how can you say they're not going to go to heaven? How can you out? Wow. I never wow. got an answer. I just, then wow. I get sent out and I go home and granny would go religion class again. I go, yes. And then, you know, I go back and then father <laughs> Kenny was talking about, and we were in another class and it was about animals that animals don't go to heaven, right? Because they don't have a soul. Oh. <laughs> Hands up going again, you know, and she would try and ignore me, but it was like, yeah, I was like, caught it, right? So yes, Terrell. And I would like, how can you say that now? The tears. Mm -hmm. When I would lose my animals, my grandmother always said, don't you worry. You will see them again in heaven. And I said, you say that they don't have a soul, sister. If they didn't have a soul, then they'd be standing there like a stuffed animal because they wouldn't be able to move. They'd have no life. They'd have no breath. How can you say that? <sighs> Out wow. I'd go again. Out. <laughs> right? Wow. That's so amazing. Constantly, yeah. constantly <clears throat> second guessing. So yes, searching, 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 mm -hmm. and always believing. I would always believe there was something greater than what this is. Always. Yes, yes. You know? Yes. And even though I am most definitely a lapsed Catholic, probably because I'm forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> Still getting get kicked out of religion. <laughs> I've got a religion so many times. But it's you just I always had a, such a strong faith in a higher power, and mm -hmm. that has not changed right. at all. Right, right. I think yeah. that's really the key element. And also, I, I, and, and I, I don't know if you agree to this, but like being also an actor and studying human condition, you know, you kind of get to understand that people are of all different, even if they're all in the same religion. Every single individual there has a different idea, different viewpoint, different path. So it's to just even to put you into one thing sometimes is a little bit, but studying acting for me was very um, spiritual. Mm -hmm. you know, it was very spiritual for yeah. me. It was like you're really studying somebody, even though that character you may be playing is an atheist, you still understand right. that there is something there. There is an energy there that you can't deny. 
Absolutely. You know, whatever that energy yes. is. So in your coaching, you know, do you utilize, oh, I'm sure you do, some of, some of your uh, actual acting, you know, talents, training into your, in, in, into it, or, or is it a completely separate thing? It's, it's not, a, I don't think anything really is completely separate because it's all snippets mm. of who we are. Right, right. Um, for me, I just, I always had this thing where I was always, you know, I would sometimes hear things or see things and I'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not, mm. no. Nah. And, and that, that sort of thing. And all of these different experiences made me go, well, what else is, what else is out there? And so I'd always, you know, my friends, we'd always want to go to, tar- you know, you, well, the girls anyway, we'd go for lunches and have our tarot cards read or, you know, oh, yeah. we were shooting Chesapeake Shore. There was this fantastic little tea place that we loved and we'd go and get our cards read or, you know, that sort of thing. And over the years of just doing this for fun and enjoying it, it was just like a fun thing. I would always be told, you are a healer. You have no idea what you're able to do. You really need to look into this more. Wow. And I always thought of it as, well, and I still do. <laughs> Healing is from what I do as an actor as well because mm-hmm. – I get to be a part of a show. Somebody watches that show. And that again, is being a part of the storytelling process that it touches them in some way. It makes right. them think in some way. It brings right. them joy. It brings them tears. It might r- help them remember an issue or something that they can relate to down the road. You know what I'm saying? So yes. there's always a part of that. So I, I used to think, well, yeah, that's a part of healing because I, I mean, that's what the writer thinks when he's writing and or right. she is writing. And I get to breathe life into that character in this particular, you know, show, that kind of thing. But I so I started to look into it more and I I would always have this thing with my hands where I could feel the energy. I mean, we all can. It's you know, we mm-hmm. can all do uh-huh. that exercise. And so I got into something I really took it to heart because it was so many times of hearing this that they were like, you need to do something with this. So I took this course and I now have a level one, two in uh, what is called therapeutic touch. And then from there, it's just like healing. It's like a, a Reiki, a moving of the energy. And, uh-huh. and, and then um, finding this woman, a friend of mine, dear friend of mine told me about going into a session with this person who uh, was quite, fantastic and relied on intuition and was getting, you know, stuff, feedback from her guides or the person she was dealing mm-hmm. with guide and, and was able to reach out and found something from her sister who actually had um, been murdered a number of years earlier. Oh, wow, and wow. so she was like, I just really believe in this person. I was like, Oh my gosh, I had to go see this person. And I have not looked back. I've been working with her steady and she would say, wow you do know. And I would say, thank you. Yes. I hear this all the time. I'm just not ready yet. And she finally, I, I would take all these courses and courses until I finally decided that I was going to go full in and become certified. So I am now a certified intuitive coach and that's how I do it. And it's just relying on what I get, things that I see, things that I hear. um, And, and that's what I do. And it's my way of giving back. I love, the joy I get from acting and being able to touch another person and the joy I get from watching somebody come in with, you know, we're such tortured souls, all of us, we all have mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be able to help them see it and, you know, perhaps guide them somewhere where they can heal that portion, like in a, in any way, I just, I love being of service and I love seeing people heal. I've, I've been like that my entire life. If somebody was hurt, I'd be the first one out the door with a blanket before 911 came wow. to help in whatever way I could. Yeah. I'm the first one to stop in the middle of traffic. And I mean, it's insane, really. I, 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 I pray my child never does it. But, you know, in the middle of traffic, because there's a dog running loose, we need mm-hmm. to save this mm-hmm. dog. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So it's yeah, always yeah. been who yeah. I am, but I never really thought about it before. I just thought I was some really crazy person um <laughs> but i always wanted to help so yeah that's what that. that's all about you know i mean the whole purpose of art is to really heal and to make people feel good that is what mm-hmm. art is that's why we even created i mean it just kind of dawned on me that you know, you wouldn't create anything unless you wanted to make someone else feel good well look at oh, you oh. with your music even right yeah. mm-hmm. how music you know, like, heals 
yes yeah, all yes music is, uh, it's i mean yeah for me music is is everything i mean we grew up listening to everything together and you get a feeling of that you can accomplish something when you listen to a piece of music that takes you somewhere i feel that it elevates you to a higher tone where you can actually then accept the universe around you and feel better and then you can confront that problem or you can confront that thing that's you know creating some kind of a, a darkness in your world because a piece of art brought you to a place and what you were saying about you know when you're in your acting and, and on your shows yeah the writer's intention was to create a conflict of something that will create that would be real to an audience and then give a person a viewpoint you know and maybe a shift their viewpoint in a way and be like you know what i did that once and maybe i shouldn't have done that or maybe i should do that you know and and that's such a major thing and i love art and you know you talk about goosebumps earlier and now look at me i got you know i, I get the same thing when i when i uh, talk about things like this because it's so important what we do mm -hmm. and that's you know that also goes to remember we had william b davis on the show and he yes. we were talking to him about acting and he talked about the why he talked about you know forget about learning your lines why did is this character doing this what's yeah. the reason you have to get that first and then get the lines later mm -hmm. yeah. and it just completely changed and that's his method of acting and that's what he teaches and i think it's amazing yeah, yeah. yeah i think so Absolutely. great <clears throat> great so let me see I, i'm gonna make sure i do apologize that i that i got that note wrong what no so, the cedar look at that she, she forgot it already yeah, i know why'd you bring it up and i, and I bring it up right <laughs> goes to show you how smooth i am <laughs> so let's talk about how i screwed up earlier <laughs> that's gonna stay with him for the rest of the day oh from when I mean, he's sleeping i mean i may need to actually book a session you guys <laughs> crack me up oh my god um, um, we want to thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, one of the things that we, uh, I mean, it's almost like 47 minutes that we've been, it's we've been amazing on. how time flies like, on whoosh. this show. Um, I know it's, this has been great. I feel like I've known you two forever. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. It's thank great. you so much. I wanted to ask you, um, our audience members, um, they're usually what we ask our guests is, you know, the last two years have been challenging to say the least. What's one of the, uh, an artist out there, you know, with the whole self taping, some people have actually stopped. I know, I know actor friends that have not gone, gone to one audition, even a self tape because they've just, they might get it and then they got to show up, you know, and they're still nervous about that. Wow. So there, there's a lot of pain and a lot of, um, concerns, uh, insecurities going on. What words of advice would you have, um, to an audience? You know, to anyone out there, it doesn't not necessarily actors or performers, but anyone really, you know, on the next phase and how moving forward is really a helpful way. With regards, now I have to ask you for the clarity with regards to mm -hmm. auditioning or with regards to no. living, living, living. <laughs> really, I mean, we're all in this together, right? Yeah. It's nice. things have changed. Yeah. He said this, you know, when 9-11 occurred, God rest every one of their souls and all mm -hmm. the families left behind. But things have changed and, and we're going to continue to change. So we have to decide as humans, what do we do? Do we want to sit in fear? We want to live in fear. Um, or do we want to live life to the fullest? Because I believe God, universe, whatever you, you choose to believe in, we're here for a reason and it is to live and it is to learn. It is to help. It is to grow. Um, so that's the choice. It's your, it is, you know, everybody's individual choice, how they want to live it. I choose to be cautious. Obviously I'm not going to throw my, you know, caution to the wind and be mm -hmm. silly, but I live my life. I teach my daughter to live our life, her life. And this is the way it is now. So we continue. Right. I mean, you think back to history, go back into history. But how did people deal with, you know, the plague? And, oh, yeah. right, and right. I mean, and the, that's the Spanish flu, like all of the wars. Think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. everybody forged ahead. And that's why we're here on this planet for, you know, we're in 2022 now. So, yeah. Yeah. To me, thank you so much for that. Um, so, Terrell, thank you so much for being on the show. This has been a pleasure. Please, uh, we're going to follow you. We're going to make sure that we keep uh, uh, track of your of all of the shows and everything premiering. And um, 
of course, um, I don't know if you're on social media, but if you are on social media, it's probably on the uh, on your It'll website. Be on, yeah, on Instagram. Yep. And so make sure you get it. All the information will be down there. A bio thank will be down there. And uh, thank you so much. Give us like thank 30 you. seconds. We're going to close out the show. We'll come right back. But thank you so much. This is Thank you great. both very thank much. You. Thank you. That was wow. so cool. Amazing, huh? <laughs> Amazing. I just love it, man, because it's just like that's what it's all about. Right Such, there, you know? Every and time we like, do this, it's just it 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 completely just uplifts you. And I know, you have and it, artists like that who are just it gives me clarity. Yes, you know, me clarity. exactly. And I hope uh, I hope that gives uh, everyone out there watching. I hope it gives you clarity as well. Uh, we love to bring you these shows. Uh, we will see you again very very soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Take care of yourselves. For John, uh, oh, I'm John actually. You're John. For John and for George. For George and for John. <laughs> Um, and for counterparts, we'll see you all again next time. Take care, everybody.